With Eleven Labs VoiceOver Studio, you can create all the audio for your podcast without ever saying a word. You could have two, three, or more co-hosts and even add sound effects. This would be a real pain if you had to take all your generated text-to-speech files export them individually, and then reassemble them somewhere. But the Eleven Labs VoiceOver Studio lets you generate and fine tune the audio of multiple speakers and then export it as a single file. And if you want it in multiple languages, that only takes a couple of more clicks to produce. I have a separate video on how to take an existing video and use Eleven Labs VoiceOver Studio to add a voiceover to it and another video where we create the voiceover as the starting point for a video. Links to those videos are in the description if one of those use cases is more of what you're looking for. Right now in this video, we're gonna generate a short podcast dialogue. Let's try it out. Once you're logged into Eleven Labs and you're in the app, this is the default page it's gonna drop you on, which is the speech synthesis page. And this is where you generate text-to-speech or speech-to-speech. -speech. From here, just come over on this left-hand menu and click voiceover studio. I always like to start by giving something a name otherwise I get really confused later and can't find anything. So I'm gonna name this podcast. We're gonna skip this optional section where you can add video or an audio. Now our studio is created. The first thing you see is a speaker card and it's just labeled first speaker. You can generate your dialogue here just by typing in the text in the speaker card. I just said hi there welcome to the podcast. Click generate audio. You'll notice down here on this first speaker track it's generating the audio for this text. Hi there. Welcome to the podcast. If you want to change the voice for an individual clip, you just select the clip by clicking on it. Come over here on the right. You have a volume adjustment. And under voice settings, we have inherit track settings turned on. And what that means is the track settings that are over on the left, whatever we have set in there, any new clip we add to this particular track, is gonna follow these settings over on the left. If we wanted to adjust those settings for this track one by one, you can turn that inherit track settings off, pick the voice that you wanna use, and then the voice model, click the little gear icon here to change the voice settings, to change the voice settings for this individual clip. There may be certain cases where you need to do that, but it's not very common. So I'm gonna use Control Z on my keyboard to undo, that's Control Z on a PC, I don't speak Mac, but I'm sure there's an undo shortcut. By leaving the inherit track settings on, that means we'll make our adjustments for this entire track over here on the left. To do that, we click this gear icon over next to the first speaker name. We can choose the model. I always leave that on the recommended default because for the most part, Eleven Labs knows better than I do about which model works best for which voice. You have all the typical voice settings here, stability, similarity, and style. Unless you've tuned these in the way you like, I recommend starting at the defaults, which you can do by clicking reset to defaults. Now you'll notice this says stale on this clip, and that's because I've made a change to the track settings that doesn't match up with what this clip was generated using. So if I just click this little refresh button right next to stale, it will regenerate using the settings we just applied to the track. Now we can play that again with the new settings. Hi there, welcome to the podcast. You can change the name of this speaker, which would be very helpful if you're gonna have more than one speaker. So we can name this one Finn, just because that's what the voice name was. Now we'll know who that is. If we wanna add another speaker, we just click add voiceover track. Now we have a new speaker track here and the name is new voiceover speaker. So let's click on our gear icon to set up the voice. Rachel is the one that pops up by default. I'm not sure why. We want to change that voice. Just click the drop down and you'll see all the voices you've recently used, all the voices that are in your voice library, whether they're professional voices, cloned voices, or generated voices. And then down at the bottom, you'll have all the pre-made voices, which are sort of the Eleven Labs standards. So I'll just pick Madison. I'm going to leave the model as default, leave the stability, similarity, and style on their defaults. And to make sure those are at the default, I'm going to click, and yes, they are. Let's change this name to Madison. You don't have to make it the same as the voice that you're using. I'm just doing that so I don't have to think up names. To place a line for Madison on the track, we just come over here on the track, and you'll see this green box sort of shows you where it's going to drop it. Let's go up here and give Madison something to say. She'll just say, we're so happy you're here with us. We'll click generate audio, and then we'll play through and see what Madison sounds like. 
Hi there. Welcome to the podcast. We are so happy you're here with us. She just sounds happy, doesn't she? Anyway, that's not the point. You can also add a sound effects track and create your sound effects right here within Eleven Labs. We just clicked Add SFX Track. We have New Sound Effects Track. You can have multiple sound effects track, just like you would with voiceover lines. You've got your green box here that's showing you where you're dropping this. So right after she says, we're so happy you're here, let's click and drop that. And our first sound effect I think we'll add is small crowd applause. We don't want it to sound like a stadium. Podcasts are much more intimate than that. We hit generate audio, and now it's cooking up our sound effect. Let's see what that sounds like. There we go. And we could just continue on from there, adding our speakers, having their conversation, adding in the sound effects that we want where they're appropriate. If we had a podcast intro and outro jingle or music or whatever, we could bring that in by uploading audio and put it at the beginning and end. In addition to using text-to-speech within the Eleven Labs VoiceOver Studio, you can also use speech-to-speech. -speech. This is very handy if you want a specific style of speech or if you're regenerating and your character just is not saying something the way you want it said. Or maybe there's a pronunciation problem that you can't get past. To generate speech-to-speech, Go ahead and drop a clip on the track of the speaker you want it to sound like when it's done. Now, oddly enough, you have to type the text in the speaker card. You can't just record and then have it turn out. You have to type in the text up here. So I said, oh, that applause was crazy. And then I'm not going to generate audio here. If I did, it would follow our track settings. Instead, I'm going to come over on the right hand menu down at the bottom. I'm going to scroll down to where it says dictation. I'm going to click this microphone button. Oh, that applause was c -c 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 crazy. Then I come down to the bottom where it says generate audio STS, which is speech to speech. I'll click generate on that. Up here in the speaker card, I just said, oh, that applause was crazy. But you heard what I recorded was a little bit more styled than that. We'll play through. Oh, that applause was c -c 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 crazy. So if your speaker voice doesn't have the right style or pizzazz that you're looking for, you can always make it up on your own and then use their voice to voice it. That's all the basics and a little beyond about using the voiceover studio to create and assemble your voiceover or podcast in this case. But I want to do something entirely different. So I'm going to just delete the sound effects track. I'm going to delete Madison. And I'm going to get rid of Finn's first line here. And I'm going to come up in the upper right hand corner, click this gear icon and say import script. And what it wants to import a script is a very simple CSV file. Just wants the speaker name in the first column and the speaker's line in the second column. If you want, you can add the start and end time of the lines. I didn't think I'd be very good at doing that. So my file just has the speaker name and their line. I'm just going to drag in my CSV file and there we have the entire entire script. And by the way, I didn't write this script or create the CSV file. I let ChatGPT do all the work. I have both my hosts separated by name. Now, none of this audio is generated yet. We need to do that. But let's go ahead and get rid of Finn. When you import your script as a CSV file, it creates a new track for each speaker and just ignores any tracks that are already there. And now I want to set up the voices for each track. I don't want to generate just yet. So we'll click the gear icon for David. And for him, I actually am going to use David, David Sutron. I'll use the recommended model, reset everything here to defaults, close this out. Then I'm going to go down here to the gear icon next to Jules. And for that, I'm going to use Ash. We're going to leave her at the defaults for now. Close out of that. I don't have to go generate these one at a time. I can just come down to the bottom right corner here and say generate stale audio and it'll go ahead and generate all those at once. So I've got some big gaps here between my clips. Eleven Labs sort of estimated how long each one of these clips were going to be, but depending on the voice you choose and the settings you choose, they can be longer or shorter. So you got to do some tidying up down here. So I just click this clip, drag it over, and I'm going to fast forward through this part because it's really boring. To make this easier, so I don't have to do a bunch of scrolling, I'm going to come over to this zoom slider. I'm going to zoom it almost all the way out. I want it just big enough that I'll be able to grab onto a clip without making it longer or shorter, but I want to be able to see as many clips as I can on the timeline at the same time. I'm trying to alternate between leaving a little space and also having some overlap 
because it's a podcast, and in a podcast, you always have people overlapping each other and talking from time to time. It's just natural conversation, and that's what we're going for. There they all are. We'll go back and see what it sounds like. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to Ridiculous Rants, the only podcast where you can find two friends arguing over the most pointless topics. I'm your host, David. And I'm Jules, here to keep this fool on his toes. Y'all know I'm the one with the charm and the smarts to back it up. So what nonsense are we diving into today, David? Well, Jules, I was thinking we tackle something that's been tearing friendships apart for decades. Something so divisive, so controversial, it might just blow our minds. Oh, Lord, here we go. What is it this time? Pineapple on pizza? Toilet paper roll orientation? Nope. We're talking about the age-old debate. Is cereal a soup? Oh, honey, you're really reaching now. Cereal ain't no soup. It's breakfast in a bowl, plain and simple. Hold on there, cowgirl. Think about it. Soup is defined as a liquid food with pieces of solid food floating in it. What is cereal? Milk, with floating chunks of deliciousness. You did not just call cereal chunks of deliciousness. That sounds like something a toddler would say. Soup is hot, David. Cereal is cold. You're not putting frosted flakes in a pot and heating it Temperature up. doesn't define a soup, Jules. What about gazpacho? That's a cold soup, and it's still a soup. All right, smarty pants. What about the whole savory versus sweet thing? Soup is savory. Cereal is sweet. You ever put croutons in your frosted mini wheats? Have you met my college roommate? That guy would put anything in a bowl with milk. But you've got a point there. Still, I'm saying the texture and liquid base make a strong case for cereal being a soup. David, bless your heart. You just want to be right so bad, don't you? I swear, if you start calling your morning bowl of Cheerios a breakfast soup, I'm going to have to revoke your southern visitor's pass. Okay, okay. How about we meet in the middle and call it a breakfast stew? You know, hearty, filling, and still technically a mix of solids and liquids. Now you're just making stuff up. Next thing you know, you'll be telling me a hot dog is a sandwich. Well, since you brought it up... Oh no, I walked right into that one. Listen, y'all, if you've got opinions on these absolutely crucial debates, hit us up on social media. We love hearing how wrong David is. And if you think Jules is just avoiding the truth, back me up. Let's settle this once and for all. Until next time, keep your rants ridiculous and your friendships intact. And remember, y'all, life's too short to take seriously. Have a laugh, eat your cereal, soup or not, and we'll see you next time. And that would be a great place to drop our outro music. You could do that by uploading the audio of whatever your intro outro is. You can also add sound effects if you wanted to do that, just like we did when we created the podcast line by line. Or if you want to add in another speaker, add voiceover track, and there you go. I did have a problem trying to upload my script in the CSV file, and it was a silly, simple problem. This is the file, two columns, speaker in the first column, line in the second column. Like I said, you can add the start time and end time as well if you want. I don't think I would do any better at guessing what the start and end times of each of these lines would be than what Eleven Labs did, so I left those blank. But then for each row, you just have your name and then the line you want them to speak. It turns out what was causing my problem with uploading are the column headers, speaker and line, the two things that are in the top row. When this came out of ChatGPT, the word speaker was capitalized and the word line was capitalized. I would have never thought anything of that. But when I changed these to lowercase speaker and lowercase line, the file uploaded without a problem. I think the ability to upload your script into Eleven Labs VoiceOver Studio as a simple CSV file creates some real opportunities, especially when you can have an AI chatbot like ChatGPT write the script for you, put it in the CSV file and format, and aside from uncapitalizing the header rows, I didn't really have to touch it. I doubt that my ridiculous rants podcast example here would take over the podcast world and leave Joe Rogan homeless or anything. But I do think there's potential to save time and create something cool using the Eleven Labs voiceover studio and having the ability to upload a script. You've got your podcast or your voiceover, whatever this thing is, ready to go, and you want to go multilingual. It's super easy in the Eleven Labs voiceover studio. And this is where it sort of turns into the dubbing studio. Down on the bottom center of your screen, you'll see original, and right next to it, you got this little plus button. And if you click that rascal, you get a pop-up, and it says add a target language. You just pick the drop-down, pick whatever language you want. They do have quite a few here to choose from. I think we'll do Hindi, add language, 
and now you let it do the work. After a little bit of processing, it'll pop up here. Now you have two columns of speaker cards. You have the original, and then you have your new language, the one we just added, which in this case is Hindi. It's taken the script, it has translated it into our chosen language, in this case Hindi, and then all we need to do is generate to get the text, which has now been translated, into speech. We can do that all at once by coming down on the lower right hand corner and clicking generate stale audio. You can follow it on the timeline and you can also follow up here in the speaker cards as it's moving along and generating these. The original clips, the clips in whatever language you started in, they will still be here but they are muted. You can see over in the left we have this mute on original. If we were to click that and unmute the original, you'd see it automatically then mutes the other version or versions if we had three or more languages here. And if you click to unmute the Hindi version, it'll automatically mute the original for you. It's also doing its best to keep the timing the same despite being a different language. You can follow through here and see that it's keeping all these clips at a fixed length of duration. So if you find something in the translation is going too fast or too slow, you might want to make an adjustment there. And the way to do that is to grab the clip. Let's just pretend this one was going too fast. You could grab the clip, drag it out a little bit, then right click somewhere on the clip and say generate audio fixed duration and it's going to and it's going to make the audio fill this longer section. Now that let us establish exactly how long we wanted it to be. Another way we could do it is without dragging and stretching, we can just right click on a clip and we can say generate audio dynamic duration. That tells the robots that they can make this shorter or longer than this original clip. See when it came in it generated everything as fixed duration making it exactly the same as the original language. Because we right clicked it and said dynamic duration we said you can make this longer or shorter than that you don't have to stay right with that. So I'm going to go back and do the same to this first one dynamic. Now if we start stretching these things out and shrinking them up we're going to have to deal with the alignment issue so we're going to have to start moving things around so that everything fits and people aren't completely talking over each other. We'll just listen to the first couple of lines here. Are, are, are. रेडिकुलस रैंड्स में आपका स्वागत है जो एकमात्र पॉडकास्ट है जहां आप दो दोस्तों को सबसे बेकार विषयों पर बहस करते हुए पा सकते हैं मैं आपका होस्ट डेविड हूं और मैं हूं जूल्स यहां इस मुल्क को सतर्क रखने के लिए आप सभी जानते हैं कि मुझ में आकर्षण और बुद्धिमत्ता है तो आज हम किस मूर्खता ऑल आई कैन टेल यू वाज दैट इट साउंडेड लाइक दोस स्पीकर्स ओनली स्पीकिंग अ लैंग्वेज आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड एंड द ऑडियो वाज प्रीटी डार्न गुड इफ यू डोंट वांट टू सी बोथ लैंग्वेजेस हियर you can come back down next to the hindi and click original and it will give you just the original when you have a language other than the original selected it shows you not only the other language but it shows you the original as well you can keep adding additional languages just by clicking the plus button select the target language and keep on going when you're ready to get your project out of 11 labs just come down here in the lower right hand corner and click export then pick one of the languages that your project is in either the original language or the, any languages that you've dubbed it in and decide what kind of file you want you have several different audio file formats to choose from or you can get the clips in a zip file i don't know why you'd want to do that but you can do it you can also export this as a timeline data file and then import it into a video or audio editor that will accept that. And last but not least, you can export your captions in an SRT format. Once you've selected the language and the file format, click export. The robots will get to work packing up your file for you and then you'll see an option to view or download the file and off you go. When you use the VoiceOver Studio, you are not charged credits or characters by 11 Labs just for creating a studio for setting it up. You're only charged when you generate. and the charge is the same as if you're using the speech synthesis page it's based on the number of characters in the text prompt to generate a sound effect it's 100 per generation it says quota here but i think we've come to know this as characters so it'll use up 100 characters for every sound effect clip that you generate the voice over studio is available to users on the creator plan or above the creator plan is $22 a month but it's 50% off for your first month which makes it $11 and then it's $22 a month every month after that that gets you 100,000 characters per month which is about 2 hours of audio if you haven't tried 11 labs yet there is a link in the description it is an affiliate link which means if you end up going with one of these paid plans at some point after following my link i may receive a small commission at no additional cost to you 
and I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you. I hope this has been helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.